Irina, thanks very much for joining us. Just from your perspective there at Inref, I guess, um, how are you seeing the, the, the current market? I think uh, first and foremost, uh, we are seeing many signs of normalization in terms of performance, uh, positive capital growth and investor confidence returning to European non-listed real estate. Um, the same can be said about, you know, valuations and uh, rent received uh, as well. And so I think that there is a lot of comfort in that. At the same time, I think the landscape uh, for non-listed real estate as an industry is changing and it's becoming much more complex uh, to kind of think through and understand. What I mean by that is, you know, in the past, your classic way of thinking about rent, for example, has been, you know, a supply and demand driven um, equation. I, I think it's much more complicated. I think the, the, the need to understand the tenant business model and tenant affordability has become much more important. I think the user-centric investment into real estate and how the tenants' expectations are from landlords have changed a lot. So that needs to be incorporated into the strategy as well. At the same time, as we have, you know, acceleration of the pre-COVID big mega trends, uh, demographics, technology, and e-commerce. On top of that, we now have ESG compliance. Uh, we have uh, the expectations to future-proof um, our assets, taking into account the new ways of using space, the new pricing and business affordability models, um, and potential obsolescence coming through if the, those are not taken into account. All of that needs to be, you know, playing part in understanding where the assets and the portfolio strategies need to be going going forward. And Irina, there's been a lot of focus on um, operational real estate um, and sort of user centric strategies, those kinds of things. Um, how important do you think that will be going forward? I think it would be fundamentally important. It probably will be changing the way uh, real estate investments are done. Uh, we spend a lot of time in the last few years talking about rebalancing of portfolios towards more operational economic growth sectors such as residential or um, micro living, uh, age living, healthcare, and so on. But I think it be goes beyond that. Um, the user centric approach to real estate really uh, uh, allows to understand the tenants' needs but also allows the landlord to really react much faster and understand the granularity of each individual buildings. Uh, and it goes not just to the operational real estate, it goes to all real estate uh, and sectors. It's just the degree of uh, user centricity might be less or more depending which model or which sector you invest in. It. And I think there are three key benefits a uh, strong relationship with the tenant, a much more agile ability to uh, actively uh, manage the asset, collect the data from that asset, embed technology, you know, embed the ESG practices as well, and then also aggregate all of that knowledge at the portfolio level. And by doing all of that, you can enhance uh, the income uh, performance and create additional income stream from the services as well as from the rental space. Uh, by building scale, one can reduce costs and improve performance by reducing costs as well. And by all of doing all of that, you also extend the lifeline of the actual physical asset. The issue of user-centric approach is quite complex and there is always a degree to what extent that can be applied. Uh, we just released a very in-depth report on that very topic, really exploring real estate investment as a commodity product and service, and the opportunities that it creates, but also the challenges that that may mean for our markets and perhaps uh, some of the action points for our industry to take on board and develop into even more agile, um, future-proof asset class. Great. Sounds like a really interesting report. Um, and I look forward to reading that in full. Thanks very much for joining us, Arena. Thank you, Richard.